Hi, welcome to Premium Builds, I'm John. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the impact of memory speeds on Zen 3 Ryzen processors. We were lucky enough to get a Ryzen 5800X on launch day, and since then I've spent the bulk of my time testing this CPU with various RAM configurations. Since AMD released their Zen CPU architecture in 2017, we've known that it's been highly sensitive to RAM speed. This comes down to the architecture of the chips themselves. Inside the processor, there are several individual chips. The CPU cores themselves are on one or more chips called the core complex. The cache memory is also on this same slice of silicon for fast access. Communication between this core complex and other core complexes and the outside world takes place via a separate I.O. die. This is known as Infinity Fabric, and the speed the Infinity Fabric can run at dictates the speed the memory can be accessed. Locking the Infinity Fabric and the memory speed one-to-one -one provides a substantial performance benefit, and the limiting factor to that performance benefit is the speed you can run the Infinity Fabric. There's also a secondary clock, the U clock or memory clock, which must be in lockstep as well. In Zen 2 CPUs, we learned that there was a strong correlation between memory speed and performance. So long as you could keep the Infinity Fabric ratio matched one to one, you could enjoy performance benefits with faster RAM. However, the Infinity Fabric had a speed limit of around 3733 MHz. Once you exceeded this, you had to leave that clock behind and even if you could clock your memory higher, you weren't guaranteed performance benefits. In fact, that could be detrimental to performance as you desynchronized the clocks and increased overall latency. How is this relevant to Zen 3 CPUs? Well, AMD made huge strides with their architecture and particularly the core complexes. Now the cache memory is shared between all eight cores on a single die, reducing memory latency there. However, the IO die is identical to Zen 2. It's still manufactured on the same process and therefore should be subject to some of the same limitations. It's reasonable therefore to assume that despite maybe minor improvements, Infinity Fabric would perform much the same on Zen 3 as Zen 2. However, at premium builds, we don't like to assume things, so we'd set about testing it. To do this, we used our test bench. It uses a Ryzen 5800X CPU, an MSI B550M Mortar motherboard, an NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti GPU, and our Patriot B-Die RAM, which is clocked at 4400 MHz CL19, but can emulate a wide range of speeds and latencies below that. I'd like to take this opportunity to explain our testing methodology here, because it does differ from many other sites. Our aim here isn't to find the absolute limits of this CPU, or the memory kit itself. We think there's much more value to you if we find out what most users can expect to experience in their own builds. That's why we're using a mid-range B550 motherboard and not an overclocking focused high-end board. There's not much point in us recommending components that cost many times what most people spend for what would be marginal performance gains. Equally, I didn't lift voltages at all because I don't consider a high voltage overclock sustainable in the long term. It might cause degradation to the ICs in the RAM and become unstable. We've also used this single memory kit to emulate a number of RAM configurations. There's no problem doing this and we don't need a stack of RAM kits to test. With settings configured in BIOS to match those of commonly available RAM kits, performance will be the same as that which you'd experience with an off-the-shelf kit. Just by altering primary timings and RAM speed on this single kit, there's a wide variety of performance. This demonstrates the importance of selecting the right RAM for your PC and also setting it up correctly. So let's look at the results we obtained and find out what they mean for RAM speeds on Zen 3. We started out finding a range of representative and stable overclocks on our system, and were pleased to find that our CPU can run Infinity Fabric at 2000 MHz. This represents a significant bump up from the 3733 MHz that most people, us included, found Zen 2 to achieve. With these settings saved, we ran our tests. We focused on the tests that showed us clearest results on Zen 2. Many tests simply didn't demonstrate the benefits of very fast RAM, or weren't representative of real world use. An example of this is Cinebench R20. It's a very popular benchmarking tool, but in our experience, it simply doesn't scale with RAM speed. You can see that the results are within run-to-run -run variance, even if we half the RAM speed by running at default 2133 MHz speeds. So let's move on to more realistic workloads. Firestrike is a 3D mark benchmark that uses the DirectX 11 API to represent older titles. The physics portion of the benchmark isolates CPU performance. As we increase RAM speeds to 3600 MHz, we see some scaling with speeds, but these aren't huge differences by any stretch. At 3800 MHz, the performance increase tails off, and we see a fairly noticeable dent to performance by 4000 MHz. This is likely down to either the slightly looser settings required to get RAM stable at 4000 MHz, or else we're looking at the limits of the memory controller. TimeSpy is another 3D Mark benchmark, and it uses DirectX 12 to offer a test that's more representative of modern titles. It's one of the benchmarks that showed clearest scaling on Zen 2. 
On our Ryzen 5800X, you can see the same initial boost in performance moving from base speeds at 2133MHz up to 3600MHz, where we hit a score of 12300. From there, performance increases soften rather than retreat as they did on Zen 2, right up to 4000MHz. And a reminder that this is 2000MHz Infinity Fabric, a new clock, the memory clock locked one to one as well. We're not seeing the same almost linear scaling we did with Zen 2 Infinity Fabric speeds, but 4000 MHz CL16 is our highest performance RAM setting by 300 points. I've included the 4000 MHz CL18 results here too, so that you can see that overall latency does matter, and not just clock speed. It's the same story with 3600 MHz RAM clocked at both CL16 and CL18. CL16 does provide a marked performance advantage, and the CL18 RAM performs similarly to 3200 MHz RAM, running at CL16. Therefore, you do need to factor in the CAS latency timings when you're choosing your RAM. Moving on to games, Shadow of the Tomb Raider has an excellent inbuilt benchmarking tool that lets us separate our CPU and GPU performance. Nonetheless, we're running our RTX 2080 Ti at 1080p medium settings to obtain these results. Again, it's a similar story, although here we do see a marginal increase up to 3800 MHz, and then again a plateau in performance up to 4000 MHz. Really pushing settings to 4000 MHz C15 brings us back to the same performance as we experienced at 3800 MHz C16. They're the same total latency, so that's to be expected. Note that looser timings at 4000 MHz yield similar or marginally worse results than 3600 MHz C16. This is commonly available RAM that you can fit and forget. We're really stretching for those last few frames of performance. Let's take a quick look at CPU render performance, because it's reported separately and it's interesting. We can see how consistently this performs, and how little extra performance we achieve with very high speed RAM. Once you've hit that 260fps average frame rate at 3600MHz, it stays there as we climb up the speeds. The same goes for the minimum and average frame rates. Clearly, we're hitting a limit of the rendering engine of this game on a Ryzen 5800X. Moving on to another demanding AAA title, Red Dead Redemption 2 uses the Vulkan API and taxes even the highest end hardware. We've used our RTX 2080 Ti and run it at 1080p low settings in an attempt to isolate CPU performance. Again, we can see that very slow RAM is detrimental to performance. 2133 MHz takes 15 FPS off the average and 50 FPS off of the maximum results of faster RAM. However, by 3000 MHz we're seeing 175 FPS average no matter how fast the RAM, and the maximum FPS creeps up from 245 FPS to 260 FPS at the very highest speeds we can achieve. Note that this test exposes a flaw in running to a CPU limit. Minimum FPS values fall into the single digits on occasion as we encountered the limit of the CPU. The rest of the time, it's the game engine limiting performance on this very capable chip. This test demonstrates the limitation of faster RAM in the real world. There are many other factors that will come into play before you hit your CPU limitation, be that your GPU or the game engine itself, and for a gaming PC, that's how it should be. Finally, let's consider a title where players really do want every last frame available. Rainbow Six Siege is a competitive first-person shooter, and high frame rates can mean the difference between winning and losing a match. It has a consistent inbuilt benchmarking tool, and using our GTX 1080 Ti on medium settings at 1080p gives us a window into CPU performance. Again, we're seeing the same trend. Speeds increase up to 3800 MHz, then our gains end, and we have to work hard to bring timings down and frame rates up at 4000 MHz. We can see in this title that 3600MHz and 3800MHz RAM performs almost identically. It's this test that's perhaps the most relevant here, because in competitive first-person shooters, you're most likely to be CPU limited, especially if you like to reduce settings for the ultimate performance. However, you can note that on a Zen 3 CPU, average and even minimum frame rates are exceeding some of the fastest monitors available today, so it's fair to say we're well into the area of diminishing returns here. So what can we conclude from this investigation? Firstly, it appears that there have been some improvements to the Infinity Fabric I.O. die on Zen 3 CPUs. We were comfortably able to achieve 2000 MHz Infinity Fabric and match that memory clock one-to-one. -one. However, this is academic if it doesn't translate into real-world performance improvements. It's those performance improvements that we just didn't see, or at least not consistently enough and in enough scenarios to start recommending faster RAM. It's very interesting from an overclocking perspective, but that's about it. So with all of this testing concluded, we're happy to keep recommending 3600MHz CL16 RAM for Zen 3, just as we did with Zen 2. Just a quick note as well about the difference between 3600MHz CL16 and 3600CL18 RAM. I tested both of these configurations because they're commonly available, but 3600MHz CL18 RAM is often cheaper and easier to find.
You can see looking at our graphs that it is in fact latency that matters, not just for clock speed. The 3600 MHz CL18 RAM performs much like 3200 MHz RAM clocked at CL16. Therefore, when you're choosing your RAM, you really should look for a combination of both speed and tight timings to really yield the performance benefits that we've seen in this test. Finally, there's been a lot of talk about running dual rank memory kits or four memory sticks in order to benefit from even faster speeds. That's not unique to Zen 3. All CPUs will benefit from the enhanced bandwidth that that configuration can offer. If you're looking for the absolute ultimate performance memory and don't mind paying for it, or you need larger capacities like 32 or 64 gigabytes, then it is worth hunting out those dual rank sticks or buying a four stick kit. Otherwise, again, the performance benefits don't outweigh the costs of buying a much more expensive RAM kit for limited performance gains that you're simply not going to see in the real world. If you're an overclocker, then Zen 3 does look to have more headroom and can run Infinity Fabric faster. That's interesting and something that you might want to try yourself. By all means, buy the fastest kit you can afford and see if you can beat my results in these tests. Well, that's it for this video. Please like and subscribe if you found it informative and leave us some comments letting us know what you'd like to see us test here at Premium Builds. Head over to premiumbuilds.com where you'll find all the latest advice, component reviews, and build guides for your next PC.